We are in the details. You, me, we are in the details. Have you ever wanted to share your story? At times, I feel like sharing my story, but every time I think about sharing my story, it sounds like everybody else's. You see, I want my story to be different. Me, I'm different. But when I think about it, the only differences are in the details. And that's it. We, me, we are in the details. And our lives evolve from how we choose to express those details. Our details are full of life. According to my mom, the first word that I ever spoke was C. And she said I kept repeating that single word over and over again until I learned others. Apparently, seeing mattered to me. Our curiosity for the world and people around us begins with us being curious, curious enough to examine the details. So, you know, I say to you, this is it, our details. My dad and I, we never got to know each other in the details. I was not supposed to be here. You see, I was his outside love child. I don't have his last name, but fortunately, or unfortunately, I have his good looks. <laughs> when I was young, he would always come by on the weekends to visit me. Uh, but he was intentionally absent for birthday parties and social events. I knew very well that I was hidden, not meant to be seen. We loved each other in our own allowable way, but it was a very distant relationship. It didn't get much better when I came to the U.S. You see, the miles, sometimes as an immigrant, right, you, get, you don't get to go home for years and time ticks by. I went four years without returning home. I just couldn't make it back. I made it back in time to visit my dad on his deathbed. That was difficult for me. You know, I always had it in the back of my mind, please, please, let me be free to see him at least before he dies. And I did. And he looked like death. And it was shocking for me to see, see him like that. You know, we kind of expect our family members to live forever, even though we know better. A couple months later, my dad passed, followed by the death of one of my dogs. This feeling of loss was intensified for me, and I had nowhere that I could run, nowhere that I could hide. So I sat alone, and I felt loss. And I thought to myself, wow, all that to come to this, all that hiding, fearing what others might think, getting in the way of us knowing each other. This man whose DNA was half mine, I did not even know. We did not know each other in the details, and now we never will. We trivialized our existence and now, poof, gone. Just like that. In 
it occurred to me that, you know, I was just paused. I was paused and things fell away. Not fell apart, fell away. The unnecessary things in my life fell away and I remember feeling stripped. And now I had time for the details. I found out that I could paint. And when I'm painting, I'm in a state of appreciation because my paintings are so detailed. And during each piece, I would usually cry for reasons such as I had never seen the flower like that before. And the beauty and the detail just touches me, and I'm ashamed that I had not noticed it before, now, as I'm painting. Have you ever seen the petunia like that before? Not me. No. Have you ever seen fire like that? No, not me. The leaf like that. No, not me, not until now in the details. The details are where we create purpose and meaning for our intersecting lives. In a fast-paced, complicated world, our lives can go unexamined. Isn't that true? Our lives can go unexamined. Each one of us stumbles and falls, but how each one of us stumbles and stands again expresses the details of the human spirit. This is my story. It is your story. It is our story, a most human of story. This is our legacy. As a teacher, I wanted somehow to share this way of seeing with others. My students, I wanted them to be touched by the details just as much as I am. But I wondered how? How was I going to do that? Because it made my life so full. You know, I wanted to share it with somebody. Uh, so the how turned out to be a forensic science facial reconstruction project. Now, this is the process whereby we create a life-size three-dimensional image of a person's face by starting out with just the skull as a clue, right? I had the joy of watching the beauty that is in the details evolve over two semesters during this project. As my students and I, we studied cranial features, learned about tissue depth markers. As scientists, we carefully observed and studied these unknown skulls. And then we measured, classified, documented, and placed tissue depth markers all over these skulls. As artists, we were opening up ourselves to learning a new skill, sculpting. The scientists and the artists became one, mutually dependent, but not the same. I watched as one student became so immersed in smoothing out clay to create a defined face no one else in her group could do that with such care and attention to detail. As we watched the faces emerge from the skulls, they became our faces, our skulls, and we could not help but imagine and wonder who they once were. We became curious about the spirit that once animated these faces. Who loved them? 
Who did they love? It was an amazing experience. The students and I, we found that through this project experiment, we embraced our unique roles determined by our natural talents. Trust and appreciation developed between us, and I could see the look of confidence in their eyes, as if to say, what's next? You see, hope is also in the details. And then it made sense to me. I said, this is excellence. Excellence was in our expression of the details. And so now I say to you that this is how we create an interconnected, wholesome family, a community, a humanity, by building upon the mutual appreciation of each other, different peoples, cultures, and talents, as we see each other as expressions of human excellence in the details. <laughs>